My name is Mike Keel. I am the Senior Manager for Product Management inside of AIOps at Broadcom. I lead the Product Management team, uh, specifically the ones uh, dealing with the Watchtower platform as we move forward with this. Uh, I get the uh, exciting opportunity to introduce the newest feature of Watchtower we just introduced yesterday, uh, the a application profiling capability. So what, what is Watchtower? Watchtower is our observability platform. It, it provides that, that single user interface so the customers can go through and do their diagnostics, understand what's going on in their system, and get all their data all in one spot so it's centralized and really ease the burden of getting through problem determination and, and research. Uh, the Watchtower platform capability has five plat five capabilities at this point. Uh, this in this presentation will be focusing on the application profiling, uh, and then there are four others with the alert insights, the ML insights topology, and the real time streaming Z iris. Uh, so we we always as we look at capabilities, we always try to link things back to personas and understand what their jobs is, what the problems are, and really how to make their lives simpler uh, based upon the problems that they're having. So this particular capability is focused on a new persona called Larry. Uh, he is an optimization expert. His job is to help um, really optimize both applications and the underlying uh, performance of the mainframe. So it's kind of a new emerging capability that we are seeing as we talk to customers. We've spent a lot of time going out, talking to our strategic customers, understanding where their pain points are, how things are changing. And Larry is one of these new personas that seems to be popping up uh, with our customers. So inside of application prof profiling, we've got really four different scenarios that we're trying to help Larry with. Uh, the first one is the visibility of an application on the mainframe. It is very much a black box. Uh, the application programmers will go through, make changes, put things in, put things up through Get or Endeavor or whatever, and it's really hard for that performance guy to understand really what the changes are, where things are going, understand how things are tied together, because he's just not intimately involved in all the coding of it. So there's that black box acts, act, aspects of it. Also, whenever it comes to making changes, there's a high amount of risk. I mean, if you go through and you change an application on the mainframe that's running trillions of dollars of transactions through, through your mainframe, right? You really don't want to change the line of code that breaks that. You don't want to be that guy that they point to and say, hey, you, you, <laughs> this isn't working anymore. Uh, or the guy that changes the performance on the mainframe so that you now don't meet that Fed deadline that you had to make, or you, your customers are seeing that uh, transaction taking longer whenever they go on their cell phone and say, I want to transfer my money. So there's a high amount of risk in changing a, a application codes. Um, and then that goes along with the, the optimizing performance and research utilization for the same reasons. As you change and configure your, your mainframe, things are going to affect the applications, how they're running, and you really need to have a really good understanding of what's going on to get rid of the risk associated with that. And the last piece that we are looking at is the root cause analysis. When there is a problem, how do you track that back to an application? How do you track that back to a piece of code? How do you track it to a module? And then be able to have confidence that you're going to be able to change it. So those are kind of the four problems that we are helping out with the application uh, profiling. And what, how we're doing this is we are tracking code as it runs through the mainframe and Track, uh, tying it together and giving a visualization for the customers of what is that code, how is it tied together, how is it performing, uh, what language is it using, what compiled version was it using, how can it um, be, be optimized based upon how many times it's run or how many times it's called by somebody else. All those details that are really needed to, to understand the application, its performance, and, and where you need to go uh, with that front. All right, so we're gonna give a demo here. So in, in this demo, we are gonna go through and look at uh, a couple of application codes and go through and show the various ways that you can use this data to understand how, how an application is performing. So the first piece that we are gonna look at is going through and looking at this language dashboard. Uh, so the, the idea is what languages 
is your code running in? Let it finish through the various options here, and then we'll get to the language dashboard. Okay, so we, we select on the language dashboard, and this is going to show you all the various languages that the code has been compiled in and run through on the environment. You can see there's a lot of COBOL in this environment, uh, C, uh, VS COBOL, PL1, and it even tells you what versions of COBOL are, are running on, on your system for you, which can be important for compiled performance. Uh, it also tells you last time it was compiled, uh, how much CPU it's using per language, so you can see where your CPU hogs are, and uh, in total CPU based upon um, when, when that code was compiled. So this is a lot of very high level information to tell you how your code is performing and where you kind of need to focus on optimization, right? Uh, is it the fact that you've got a lot of COBOL running, so you need to worry about, all right, well, maybe if I do get my COBOL to that next version of compile, I'm gonna save CPU. Or do you have a lot of C++? Uh, the next dashboard we're looking at here is the different uh, COBOL versions. So it's going to break it down by each version of COBOL and when that when that uh, module was actually compiled. So it'll show you uh, how much CPU you're using and uh, what percentage of all your modules are to different versions of COBOL. Once again, uh, allowing that application uh, programmer or that performance guy to focus on particular versions of COBOL so that they can go through and get that modernization effort going through and know where they actually need to focus because maybe the really old version of COBOL, there aren't a lot of, you're gonna get a lot more bang for the buck if you go to that next version up to, to recompile and then get, get the other one later. How would you make the determination with the, with the data that you have? How would you make the determination that maybe the, the difficulty is the older version of COBOL, I'm not seeing the connection. Uh, so it's showing how much CPU is using per version of COBOL that you have running. So uh, historically, the older the version of COBOL, as you recompile into newer versions, you get better and better performance savings as the, as you go up. So I'm just going to ask my same um, yeah. diagnostic question. Is there any plans to, to, to that front page to add a diagnostic um, it's like if you clicked on this, I have this many version, this, this much running in this version yep. and the solution would be to jump three versions to really, I don't right. know, something like that. Uh, so yes, the, we, we, we would look at that in, in terms of understanding that, but the mileage is going to vary based upon your systems and, and all that stuff, right? I, IBM does give out, Hey, you're going to see a 7% performance increase if you go here, but that's kind of an average. So there, there, there's no guarantee that that's what you're going to get, right? Sure. Um, so it's, it is it is hard to give a hard number in here, but generally speaking, if you go to newer versions, you're going to get better performance. Um, so what, what we're looking at here is we drilled into a particular module of COBOL, and what this is using is it's using a, um, a program, a sketch whiz. We're eventually going to transition this into the same user interface uh, for topology. Uh, and it is going to show how the different modules are connected together and, and run that together uh, for you. So that should go up here in a second. So now this, what this is, is this is how all the code ties together. Uh, we can combine that with the topology, which is the infrastructure topology. And now you have a really good view of not only your infrastructure and how everything runs out, now you can see, well, this CICS transaction is actually calling this program and kicking off all this stuff. And now you have a really good view of your application. Uh, tie that in with the tagging feature, and now you now have your applications, your production, your test, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a question? You answered it, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then um, what we're looking at here is various iterations of diving through the information we have on the performance side. So you can see how often this module was called, what version it's running, the CPU that it uses. All this is vital information to understanding. Is this a problem child module? Is this something that, hey, if I, this guy's running an old version of COBOL, it's called 50 million times. Maybe I should recompile it because it's gonna get, get better performance as opposed to, well, this one is, on the same version, but it's only called twice, right? So that you, you're not going to get as much bang for your buck by recompiling the, the one that's only called twice as the one that's called 50 million times. 
Uh, so it's it's really trying to get that all that information for you in a real easy to consume manner, so that you can figure out the best ways to target those those upgrades as in, as you go through your various um, modernization of your programming languages. And And this is the one once again showing different C, uh, CPU times based on the module. Uh, this is looking at the modules that called the specific one that we had. So you can see how often uh, that module was called versus how often it is uh, going off in, into uh, the module you were deep diving in. Is the end of that demo here? Uh, this also has a very, very simple architecture here. It is tying into the, the language environment, so it's being able to pull that information in real time for you. It's sending it down to a database in our Kubernetes cluster, and then uh, going through a Postgres database to analyze and display all, all the information for you. So it is a very, very is simple architecture on that one. And Mark, just before you jump on, one in, in the demo, you showed a, a code snippet down the left-hand side. Yes. Where are you getting that from? Is that pulling that from Endeavor, or is it, is it reading the, the, the compile listings? Or? Uh, so the demo was using uh, Sketchviz as the thing that was doing that. So that was just an example that was, comes out of the Sketchviz demo. So it just got deleted, and uh, what we wanted got put in it. So until we get it integrated into topology, it's using the third party. Okay. So uh, this is a bit left field, but once upon a time, um, I was having a conversation with someone else in this room, and um, some of the customers we wanted to speak to, we wanted to know how much code they presided over, because that was also another le leading indicator for the yep. or the size of the task over which they, you know, the, the size of the modules that you may want to recompile may have a bearing on how much time it might take or how right. complex it might might be. Does, can this tie in back into Endeavor or somewhere to get a sense of the scale of the size of the, the modules as well? So that's next on our roadmap of what we're looking at. So the, what we are focused on right now is what's running, right? And then we're going to start looking at the, the DevOps side of the house, right? It, things like Endeavor, uh, can, can we look into there so we can figure out change, what's going on in terms of the change? So. Right. You're running this, it was latch changed in Endeavor three days ago. Well, now you're having a problem, so maybe you need to regress that change, yeah, right? That might be it, yeah. Um, yeah. That, that kind of stuff. Okay. Good. So, okay. Uh, so, we did a, do a, a preview of this functionality uh, with uh, a future um, uh, a analyst, Stephen Dixon, and he uh, really jumped out on. Really, this helps to justify making changes on a, on the system or understanding the performance risk of that change, right? So you're not just going in and saying, well, I'm going to change this module because it's old, right? Or something like that. You, you actually have justification for why you're doing it and can go through and understand the risk and understand uh, where you want to go with that particular change and have good insightful data to justify that change in a change management board or an application programmer to go through and do that. And uh, lastly, this is available as part of the Watchtower platform. And for all of our customers that currently have SysView, Netmaster, Ops, or Vantage, it is available as part of their license today. They can go out, download it off of our sites and, and get, uh, get access to it.